and that heavy transfer spend ultimately drives the cash flows for Sunderland. Other than 2016, cash has flown out each and every season for Sunderland. And over the decade, that adds up to million leaving the Stadium of Light. Um, and we've got to come through it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moment where we're all getting tested. Multiple takeovers, back-to-back -back relegations and decades of operating losses. It's been a turbulent decade for the Black Cats, but having preserved their championship status for another season, let's dive into the financial story of Sunderland AFC. Sunderland's top line peaked in 2017, their final season in the Premier League. Since then, consecutive relegations saw four straight years of decline, but promotion has since Sunderland rebuild, generating 35.5 million in 2023, their best result since 2019, but still shy nearly 90 million of their best season. In the Championship, this was the seventh best result, and for teams without parachute payments, they were second only behind Bristol City. So what's fueling this resurgence? Let's dig into the revenue streams. First, match day revenues, making up more than half, raked in over 19 million, their best result since Premier League relegation. Whilst not fully recovering, average attendances at the Stadium of Light saw a jump in the right direction at just under 39,000. This was the highest across the division, underlining the potential of the Sunderland fan base. Next, TV and media, Sunderland made 10 million, 7 million up on the year before due to their return to the championship. However, this may see a small decrease in 2024, having finished in the bottom half of the table this year. And finally, we have commercial revenues of 4 million, well down from the 13 million in their final year in the Prem. 2023's main partnerships were with Nike as kit maker and Spreadex as main sponsor. But the Black Cats are changing it up, having inked a deal with former kit maker Hummel for a five year multi million pound deal. So, commercial and retail revenues could be on the up. Yeah, delighted for everybody, delighted for the club. Now let's dive into profits. The bottom line picture isn't pretty. It's been losses every single year for the Black Cats, with all seasons in the red. Though losses in recent years have been restricted compared to the end of their Premier League run. Sunderland's operating loss was still in the top half of Championship results, highlighting the financial pressures in the second tier of English football. But what costs have driven these results? We'll need to have a look at it. We'll need to see what, what way is best, what's best suited for Sunderland and, and see where we go next. Let's address this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue and dive into staff costs. Wages steadily increased as Sunderland fought to stay in the Premier League until 2017. But following consecutive relegations in COVID, that had contracted by 85%. Rebuilding and promotion have seen wages increase to almost 26 million. As a proportion of revenues, staff costs now make up 72%, and other than COVID, these have never exceeded 80% over the decade. But how do these staff costs translate onto points on the pitch? The wage efficiency has swung massively over the decade. Sunderland's relegation season saw points cost over 3.5 million each. Regrouping in League One, points on average cost just 200k, and that's doubled in their first season back in the Championship. But after staff costs alone, Sunderland have generally kept within revenue. Next up, operating costs. In the Premier League, these peaked in 2017 at 35 million. Despite a one-off bump in 2019, these have reduced and now remain around 15 million for the last two seasons. But what caused that jump in their first League One season? The accounts show a 20 and a half million exceptional operating expense, reported to be the write-off of parachute payments used by then parent company Madrox to buy the team. But at EBITDA level, the impact of Premier League relegation starts to take shape. Third, stadium and facilities. These have remained between 1 and 2 million over the decade. The exception, 2018, where land was sold for a profit of over 8 million. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. The Premier League era is littered with heavy transfer costs as the club invested heavily in players such as Didier Ndong, Jack Rodwell and Stephen Fletcher. In fact, Sunderland's failed transfer strategy led them to write off 30 million in transfer fees, 27 of that straddling the relegation seasons. But since 2019, net transfer costs have reset, but 2020, the only year a profit was made. So restricted transfer spending has mitigated the losses in recent years, but Sunderland still find themselves in the red. So what about financial fair play? As a reminder, Sunderland can definitely afford to lose 15 million over this three year period. 
If funding from owners over the last three years met secure funding requirements, that would increase to 33. As this isn't clear, let's be cautious. Starting with operating profit, we must add in interest costs to get losses before tax. Sunderland can also exclude certain costs, such as youth development and women's football, as well as make a number of adjustments due to COVID impacts. These aren't disclosed, so we are in the realm of estimates. As Sunderland have a Category 1 academy, we're assuming 7 million of allowable costs and all COVID adjustments net to zero. Add those back in and we get Sunderland's estimated PSR loss. Under 5 million, well within the lower threshold. But what about 2024? Well, Sunderland has PSR headroom to spare. In fact, without any further funding, Sunderland could afford to lose 13 million in 2024. Factor in Ross Stewart's sale to Southampton for around 10 million, and PSR doesn't appear to be a limiting factor for the Black Cats. It's just not very strong, is it? I told you we'd do it. <laughs> Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dial line items, has an interesting trajectory. 2016 was a banner year, but post relegation, cash has flown out of Sunderland until 2023. That heavy windfall in 2016 means that across the decade, Sunderland have actually generated 1 million. But if you look from 2018 onwards, that plunges to 53 million of cash flooding out. Now back to transfer fees. Heavy investment in the Premier League years, followed by more modest inflows and outflows. Over the decade, that's resulted in 75 million of cash spent on transfers. And that heavy transfer spend ultimately drives the cash flows for Sunderland. Other than 2016, cash has flown out each and every season for Sunderland. And over the decade, that adds up to 75 million leaving the Stadium of Light. Um, and we've got to come through it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moment where we're all getting tested. So how much funding has been required? The majority of cash funding came from Ellis Short, who was estimated to have written off hundreds of millions when he sold the club in 2018. Since then, the revolving door of owners has ultimately increased funding over the decade to 154 million. However, that write-off means in 2023, Sunderland's debt is just 18 million, all owned to current owners Kirill Louis-Dreyfus and Juan Satori, which appears to be a much healthier position than the 141 million owed back in 2015. So, will Sunderland continue to rebuild and fight for a seat back at the Premier League table? Only time will tell.